uh, following along, watching along with uh, great anticipation for that flight is uh, Flight Director Courtney McMillan. She's uh, serving as the lead flight director for that uh, that dem demonstration flight, the Cygnus Commercial Orbital Transportation Services, or the COTS demo flight. And then, uh, of course, that is scheduled to go to the station with payload. And then uh, that will be followed by uh, what's known essentially as the commercial resupply uh, mission um, and uh, the orbital mission. Um, and that also uh, is being watched by a, a flight director that will lead that mission from uh, here in Mission Control, at least, and that's Brian Smith. So they're following along not only um, with the flight control team here that's overseeing station operations, but uh, with their own teams as well. And launch team be advised, we will be pulling to proceed with the start of engine sure, keep going. flow chill down at T minus 35 minutes, approximately four minutes. So Kyle, yeah, you were correct. The uh, the launch today is really the last in uh, what was an extensive series of development, qualification, and systems tests. The goal of the A1 mission today is to demonstrate the operational Antares launch system from rollout of the rocket, from its integration facility, through placement on the pad, which you saw, and fueling, to launch and delivery of a simulated payload, the Cygnus Mass Simulator, to a target orbit of 250 kilometers by 300 kilometers with an inclination of 51.6 degrees. As we've been discussing, the mission will launch from the Mars spaceport Pad OA at Wallops Island, Virginia, and will be supported by the NASA Wallops Flight Facility Launch Range. Um, the mission today is uh, actually about 603 seconds long to payload separation, or just over 10 minutes, and then actually beyond payload separation, the mission itself will extend an additional eight and a half minutes for a uh, CCAM maneuver. Mission profile, very briefly, uh, the vehicle will lift off from Pad OA at Wallops, and the first stage will fire for approximately four minutes, propelling the launch vehicle to an altitude of about 113 kilometers before separating. The upper stack, stage two, will continue on an unpowered trajectory for about 93 seconds, during which the payload fairing will separate from the vehicle before ignition of the second stage. The second stage is going to burn for a little more than two minutes before burning out at an orbital altitude of approximately 256 kilometers, or about 160 miles. Once again, at a little less than 10 minutes from liftoff, the sig simulated Cygnus payload will separate from the launch vehicle at its target orbit. Here you again see the vehicle on stand, and uh, final preparations are being made for main engine chilling. And so we see the clock counting down to about 36 minutes to launch. Uh, the next poll will come up, uh, should be about the bottom of the hour. And that will uh, essentially be a poll to proceed with uh, the main engine system, or MES, chill down. That's uh, scheduled to start about uh, right around that same time frame once the poll is uh, completed. <coughs>
And launch time, this is LC on countdown one. At this time, I'd like to pull to proceed with the start of MES low flow chill down. GSO? Let's get through the. GSO is go. GSO is go. RSO? RSO is go. RSO is go. NASA TD. NASA TD, go. NASA TD is go. OLL. And OLL? Not countdown one? OLL is ready. OLL is go. Stage one? Stage one is go. Stage one is go. GC? GC is go. GC is go. Ace. Ace is go. Ace is go. LD. LD is go. LD is go. Launch team is go for MES. Uh, MES chill down. Also chill down will commence at T minus 30 minutes. Check 350. Launch team be advised. Uh, we have uh, had moved step 351, 352, and 353 previous in accounts, and the black line is deleted at the time. All personnel in the LCC uh, attention. All personnel in the uh, LCC attention. Uh, at the T zero and sent, all personnel are to remain uh, on console and uh, within the uh, hardened area uh, for safety direction. And so you were just listening to Adam Lewis, who's the launch conductor, conduct a uh, the poll for the uh, to proceed with main engine system or MES chill down. That uh, activity should begin here uh, in just about three minutes at the bottom of the hour, 30 minutes after the hour. <coughs> And we're coming up on 30 minutes after the hour. This is the point where uh, the uh, start of the engine medium flow chill down or the uh, low flow chill down should begin.
And MES1 LC, step 354, verify toss 1 and toss 2 temperatures are decreasing. LC, uh, TOS rep confirm. LC copies, check 354. And launch team be advised, we have started our low flow medium chill at this time. Excuse me, our low flow MES chill at this time, and our launch window is now 10 minutes in duration. Electrical 1 LC, step 355, verify no ignition commands are present prior to ODM arming. I see. So, John, with that call, that appears to be good news. Everything's still going well, and, and he uh, referenced that uh, the launch window now will be uh, reduced from 15 to 10 minutes. LZ copies. Check 356. That's correct. We've proceeded into uh, low flow chill, and we continue to uh, we go for launch. As you mentioned, the launch window now has uh, neck down to uh, only about 10 minutes of hold left hold capability uh, available to us in the count. So the next, uh, <coughs> by the, the countdown timeline, the next uh, major poll will be the proceed with the final countdown. That actually, um, all goes smoothly, that uh, should be the last formal poll of the, uh, of the launch team. Um, things move pretty quickly in the countdown once you get uh, inside 10 minutes, so That's uh, correct. it starts happening very quickly. Yeah, the last formal poll uh, we'll hear is at L minus 12 minutes. Uh, so maybe while we're waiting, we can talk a little bit about uh, the launch site itself. So, uh, uh, Kyle, here we see the, uh, we've seen the launch vehicle on the new Mars Pad OA. And uh, looking at this now, it's hard to believe that only a few years ago this was a greenfield site. Um, groundbreaking uh, for Pad OA happened in June of 2009, and construction began uh, in 2010. I think over 900 concrete pilings were installed to support the uh, horizontal integration facility in Pad OA. As we were talking about earlier, the uh, Wallops Flight Facility is actually the oldest launch range in the United States, established in 1945 by the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics as a center for aeronautic research. It's the principal NASA facility for management and implementation of suborbital research programs. It's actually a... Uh very unique launch pad. It's, it's actually beautiful if you can say that a, a launch <laughs> a launch pad is uh, beautiful, but uh, a pretty interesting uh, structure. And as you said, it was about what was it from June of '09 is kind of when they started construction all the way to the to the uh, hot fire test that occurred just back in late February. Yeah, that's correct. It's. Uh it took a little while, but it was a fairly extensive process to actually bring online a brand new liquid uh, launch uh, pad and facility uh, in the U.S. So um, you see the water tower there. It's the highest on the East Coast at 255 feet above sea level. It was actually sized for our on-pad hot fire test. It holds about 200,000 gallons of water with another 50,000 gallons stored in the rest of the system. It supports uh, both acoustic suppression and the pad, pad deluge systems with a flow rate of about 245,000 gallons per minute. So it pretty much empties out uh, completely in, a, in about a minute. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's pretty impressive. You know, the development of commercial aerospace industry in Virginia has had a tremendous economic impact, according to a recent report.